Hello, my name is Jay Austin Huey, and today I'm going to show you a quick demo on how to get a small app running on Node.js on Engine Yard Cloud. First, I'm going to show you a very quick demo of the application in question. It's just a step beyond Hello World. All it does is literally take a post and throw it into the database and allow you to view it. So, just to fill out the form here, you can see essentially how it works. That's really all that this particular application is doing. We'll put a link to the GitHub repository inside the show notes, but we'll show you a quick brief overview of what it's doing now, just so you have an idea of how things work. The first thing I'll show you is the application entry point, app.js. On Engine Yard Cloud, you'll always use app.js as the application entry point, never server.js or index.js or anything else. Now you can have whatever other files that you want in your project as long as the entry point for the application is app.js. The first thing I want to show you is exactly how to figure out what the database connection string should be. Database access credentials will be available to you as environment variables inside your environment. The node process should be able to access them using the process.env method and then call the framework env option, for example, if you want to find the framework env, if you're running in production or development and so on. You can also have access to the DB user, the DB password, and DB host names, as well as the application name or app name environment variables. On Engine Yard Cloud, we use the convention of calling the database the same thing as the application name. We don't suffix it with underscore production or underscore development or the environment type, just the application name. The next thing I want to show you is how to bind to the correct port. Along with the other database access credentials, there's one other important environment variable that you should know about called port. Now, on localhost, you can bind to pretty much whatever port you want, as long as it's not already in use. You can bind, for example, here I'm showing you port 3000. But in production, we have a convention of using port 6000 for your Node.js app. However, that convention is subject to change. So instead of hard coding it, just use the environment variable port and then tell the application to listen on that specific port. Now there are two hosting options available to you here. You can either go through Nginx or Node.js and have Node.js process all requests. The primary difference is that Nginx, with this particular first option, will look for static assets and serve those up on its own if it finds them. But that doesn't work real well if your application is using WebSockets. If it is, you need this second option, just Node.js. In both cases, Nginx will be running and processing HTTP requests. However, in the second case, with Node.js selected, Nginx just blindly passes the request straight to Node.js and lets it do its thing. Now I'm going to show you how I went ahead and did migrations in this particular application by going into the application's root, which is going to be at cd slash data, the application's name, which we just call blog, and current. And here we can see the different uh, directories and files. Now you'll notice that a few things here didn't exactly exist in the repository. For example, the config directory. The config directory has a lot of uh, configuration variables defined as YAML and one uh, or two that are bash scripts uh, for environment variables and other objects that the engineer platform puts in place for you. So for example, let's look at the env entry here. This specifies various different environment variables that we'll need in order to run these database migrations. So I'm going to source that file. Now we have things available to us like framework env. So when we look at app. excuse me, and when we look at migrations, we've got two files. We've got initial db setup and add timestamps to posts. So just looking at initial db setup, you'll see that we're doing the same thing here that we did inside app.js to figure out whether or not we're running in production or on the local machine. Now in this case, of course, we have to have the framework env and other environment variables available to whatever runs the node process in order for it to find out that it is indeed running in production. So that's why I sourced that env file earlier. So now when I run node initial db setup.js, 
it'll run and migrate the database. So here we are back inside the dashboard. I'm going to show you how to access the application now. Just right click the HTTP link there, open it in a new tab, and you should see the application up and running. Now when you happen to see the front page of engineer.com, there will likely be some announcement about Node.js and some way to sign up for a free trial. But in this case, I'm just going to click the button for Ruby. The reason is because our PHP product is a completely different infrastructure and platform. And this is going to be, the Node.js is going to be built on our Ruby platform at the moment. So you just click that and sign up here. Just enter your name, your email, your password, and you get 500 free hours of trial time. Now, if you have any questions, I strongly encourage you to contact Engine Yard. Just come down to the contact section here and give our sales team a call. They can put you in contact with the right department within the company to answer whatever questions you may have about the Node.js launch, about our platform, or anything else that you might want to know. You can also, of course, fill out this form and send us an email. So, thanks for watching. Now go build some Node.js apps and have fun.